Well, howdy everybody. How are you doing today? High five to all my homies. So I hope you guys are all doing great. And uh, what are we talking about here? We're talking about instantly opening up the fingerboard. And what I'm talking about exactly is uh, just kind of like, you know, we're just gonna pretend that you only know one scale. You know, your basic Ionian, you know, mode. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to really take just one shape and expand it, uh, you know, pretty drastically, the way that it's gonna actually have you covering a huge chunk of the fingerboard with just a little bit of knowledge. So if you guys would like tabs for this lesson, they are down below waiting for you on my website. You can also check out lesson packs I have there about building speed, legato, picking, all that stuff. And let's get going. Okay, so let's get going on this one. So what am I talking about? So basically, what I'm gonna teach you is something that you probably already know, if you know your major scale. So what I mean by instantly opening up the fingerboard is inside of just one single shape of our scale. Now you could learn any of the mode shapes if you wanted to and do the same thing with it. You could have Ionian, Dorian, uh, Phrygian, Mixolydian, all those, and this will apply to any of them. So basically, if you don't know it, I'm gonna go ahead and show this to you real quick, which is just, like I said, it's G Ionian or G major scale is what most people are gonna refer to it as. So we're gonna be uh, playing three, five, seven on the low E, three, five, seven on the A, four, five, seven on the D and G, and then uh, five, seven, eight on the B and high E. It's the basic G major scale. You can move this anywhere. So I just picked G because it's a great key to work out of. Now, what I mean by taking what you already know and what you don't know at the same time is what a lot of people forget to do is they apply octaves. And I teach this a lot to my students, and um, this is going to be a very expanded version of, you know, the simple idea that I, I normally throw at people. So what we're going to do is take our first six notes. Now, instead of continuing our scale, here, and really only covering about this much of the fingerboard, you know, not a whole lot of it. We are going to go like this. So we're going to be going five, I'm sorry, three, five, seven, three, five, seven. Then we're going to do an octave. Shift up, five, seven, nine, five, seven, nine. Okay, we're going to do another octave of the same notes. Eight, 10, 12, eight, 10, 12. So already now, look how much we've expanded our scale. I know we're using the same notes, but it's going to give you different ideas, you know? You know, different sounds than that you were getting before. And that's where then, you know, different inspiration and stuff like that can really come into play. So what do we do next? So we have that much kind of going on, and which, what I would definitely recommend is being able to ascend and descend that. And descend. Here you know, we can do it really comfortably. Now, what we tend to leave out, if you just did that one, is we also have two other shapes that we did. We have a half step, whole step shape here on the D and G, which is four, five, seven. Well, this one's kind of cool because it's in the middle of the, you know, sequence, and let's just do an octave of this one. So the octave of that would be five, eight, or sorry, seven, eight, ten. Now look, we've expanded out a little bit more than what we had before. Okay, well, we also have a lower octave of it, which would be five, three, two, and five, three, two. So right there is another one. So now with that one, if you put it all together starting from the top, you'd be going... Aha, look, now we've extended our scale back this way a little bit further. So when we started out like this, all we've done is take the exact same knowledge that we already had, just taken our notes and did octaves. And look, now we're covering this much of the fingerboard. So that's a big difference. Sorry, I keep leaning it back and it's getting the, the lighting. But, um, like, I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot more room to work with. So we also have another shape here. Uh, the 5, 7, 8 on the B and high E. Well, let's do the same thing with that one. Let's move it down an octave. So we'd go 8, 7, 5, 8, 7, 5. Down an octave would be 5, 4, 2 on the G and the D. Down another octave. Now we get to have some open strings. We're going to go 3, 2, open. And 3, 2, open. We extend our scale even further. So now we're basically going from here to here. These are all the notes we have to work with now. I'm not saying we know all the notes everywhere, but so already we have a whole different sequencing concept to this whole scale all of a sudden, and it's just drastically increased how much that we have to work with on the fingerboard. We're not stuck in the same octaves or the same notes anymore. Right here, I mean, you could do a lick. There. 
And there you have it there as well. So to recap, I know it was a simple idea. All you're doing is taking a scale that you already know, I did it two strings at a time, and you move it through octaves, either higher or lower. And what this does is it drastically expands your reach of the fingerboard, you know, the knowledge. We're not doing any of the crazy new shapes or scales, but as you know, as we showed, we took one thing that had us pretty much boxed in between three and eight, you know, didn't have any notes outside of those frets. Then we went from open all the way to 12. Big difference right there. All right, hey, hope you guys enjoyed that lesson. Like I said, taps are down below. You can check all that stuff out. You can check out another video over here somewhere. There will definitely be a video popping up and uh, it, it's a great one. That, that is a good video. That one, hey. So other than that, peace out guys. Keep on rocking and I'll see you later.